So it looks like uh, we're coming pretty close to the end of the year, which also means it's time for me to do my best laptops a 2021 video. I've reviewed a ton of laptops this year, not all of them, but a lot of them. And if your favorite laptop is not in here, it's probably not in here because I didn't review it or it sucks or it was really good, but not good enough to be number one. So don't get upset at me, okay? I'm very sensitive. On top of that, like the video if you like it, subscribe as it will help out the channel, but most importantly, let's get started. Let's start off with the best all around laptop and that hands down goes to the MacBook Air. With the M1 processor, this thing is perfect for a student, even a business professional or anyone that just needs something light, portable, with great battery life, that's quiet, has a good screen, good speakers, the whole shebang. I think the M1 MacBook Air is the sweet spot. Don't go with the MacBook Pro. I think you're paying more for stuff you really don't need. And the fact of the matter is it just performs as well as the MacBook Air. Now, obviously not everyone wants a MacBook. And if you're looking for a Windows laptop, my two top picks are the Dell XPS 13 or the Razer Book 13. And the reason why I say these two is because they're so similar in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to performance, but the differences are very minor. If you want more ports, go for the Razer Book 13. If you want the better look, go for the Dell XPS 13. My suggestion is find the better deal. Whatever is on sale at the time when you need this laptop, go with that. If you're looking for something more affordable, like under $1,000, around the six to $800 range, HP Envy 13, HP Aero, which is a great laptop, it has an AMD Ryzen processor. If you want something super cheap, the HP Laptop 14T is a good pick too, or any of Lenovo's idea pads. Now the best gaming laptop was a tough choice because there's so many good gaming laptops this year, but if I had to pick one, it would definitely be the Legion 5 Pro. It's not a 15 inch laptop, it's not 17, it sits right in the middle at 16 inches. But what made this laptop so special was the screen. This is a 16 by 10 gaming screen. It has a high refresh rate, it has good color accuracy, it's bright. It's a good laptop in general, like the performance that you get from it is exceptional. And the GPU inside of it has a higher wattage than other RTX 3070s that are in laptops like the G15. Now this is more of an aggressive look, it's a bit heavier, but I love the fact that they put the ports on the back so that if you're using it on your desk, it keeps the entire area clean. Now if you're looking for something a bit more portable, with good gaming performance, then I definitely go for the Zephyrus G15. Like the battery life is much better than the Legion 5 Pro. The only downfall to this laptop is you don't get a webcam. So if that's something you can live without, then the G15 might be a better pick for you. I do wanna give an honorable mention to the M16. I do think it's a fantastic laptop, but here in North America, you're stuck with the RTX 3060. But in other places in the world, if you can get it with the RTX 3070, it's a slightly better performer than the G15, but you will take a hit on battery life. Now jumping over to two-in-ones, I gotta give it to the Surface Pro 8. I know it's an expensive two-in-one or hybrid and it's very overpriced in some ways, but it's the best one on the market, you know? It's one of the only two-in-ones that have a 120 hertz display. And if you're using a high refresh display on your phone or even on another computer, it's really hard to go back to 60 hertz. You pair that with the color accuracy, the three by two aspect ratio, the, the bright screen, and then you buy the type cover and pen to go with it, you get a great experience. That pen is so good for writing notes. Like they built this little motor inside of it. So every time you draw or write on the screen, it actually feels a lot more like you're writing on paper than a glass display. Now this is out of your range. I do suggest the HP Spectre X360. It's a 14 inch laptop. You still maintain that three by two aspect ratio. So you get that good vertical height for productivity and you don't have to spend as much money. It's a solid, solid laptop with a good amount of ports. It looks super classy and it's a lot of fun to use. Now, those are both expensive laptops and if you're looking for something more mid range, definitely check out the HP NV X360 instead. This wouldn't be a good video if we didn't talk about the 14 inch laptop market, specifically ones with dedicated GPUs. This is a new trend for the past few years and there are three top picks that come to mind. The first one is the Asus Zephyrus G14. If you're looking for something that's very portable, is good for gaming, but also good for content creation, is not gonna break the bank, that's priced very well and offers a bit of upgradability like the RAM for example, get this, you know? 
I think this is the sweet spot in terms of that 14 inch form factor with dedicated GPUs. You will not have as good of a gaming experience compared to the Blade 14, just because the response time on the display is not as good as it is on the Blade, but it's good enough and the high refresh display still feels super nice to use. If all you care about is gaming, then yeah, go for the Blade 14. It's gonna cost you a lot more money, but you can spec it with a more powerful GPU, and of course you have a slightly faster processor. If both of those are out of your budget, then take a look at the Acer Swift X. The battery life on this is better than both of these guys. Like this is a much better option if you're like a student, want the all day battery life, but still have that RTX 3050 Ti inside that will let you do things like game lightly, and of course uh, do other things like video creation. Moving on to the best laptop for creators, and that hands down goes to the MacBook Pro 14 and 16. I mean, these things are engineering marvels, you know? They're quiet, they're efficient, they pretty much give you the total package except for upgradability, you know? And I'm using the 16 M1 Pro, but I think most people should go for the 14 M1 Pro. Not only is it lighter, you're saving yourself a couple hundred bucks, you get the same performance, and you get good battery life. I think if you're buying the M1 Max, you pretty much know who you are, but someone like me is more than happy with the M1 Pro. Now, if you can't use these Macs because you're some sort of 3D artist and you need something specific that uh, Apple Silicon hasn't been optimized for, then I would stick with one of those gaming laptops I mentioned earlier, or if you want something more professional or ultra performance in a thinner and lighter form factor, check out the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4. Don't buy it with a 3080, 3070 or lower, and make sure it comes with two sticks of RAM. Or if you want something slightly bigger, get the Dell XPS 17, not 15, because bigger chassis, better cooling, and you can spec it with a more powerful GPU. Now, when it comes to 17-inch gaming laptops, two come to mind. The Razer Blade 17, which is my personal favorite. It looks the best, it performs very well, has tons of ports, has a beautiful screen. It has all the more high-end features you'd want in an expensive gaming laptop. The only problem is it's a bit conservative. So if you're looking for like a true desktop replacement and you want performance to run wild, then I'd probably lean towards the MSI GE76. It doesn't have the same build quality as the Razer, but the performance is unbelievable. It's hands down the fastest 17-inch gaming laptop I've tested this year. So I didn't review a lot of business laptops this year, only like maybe three in total, but the one that keeps coming to mind, and I don't think this is the best business laptop, but probably my favorite is the Lenovo X1 Nano. This thing was so much fun to use, you know? Under two pounds, it still retains that ThinkPad quality by giving you the same feel, the magnesium chassis, or alloy chassis rather. You have those ThinkPad tactile keys and such a thin and light form factor. The battery life is good, and even though it's using a more efficient U-series processor, I still found it more than powerful enough for general productivity. Like if you're a business warrior and you're traveling a lot again, this is the laptop to take a look at. Now two things before I wrap this up. Number one, there's no Chromebooks in this video because I didn't review any Chromebooks this year. And number two, don't rule out the entry level iPad. Technically, it's not a traditional laptop, but it's Apple's best deal. And for that price point, you get a device that's great for general productivity, it's good for conference calls, and it's great with battery life and general note taking. So that wraps up my best picks for 2021. Let me know what you're rocking right now and your favorite laptops in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.